Hi, good evening, and welcome to Fire Safe Marin's webinar series. My name is Bill Tyler, and I'm the Novato Fire Chief, and I will be your guest host tonight. Fire Safe Marin webinar series is created by a member of our educational committee, including representatives from fire agencies, environmental groups, the UC Marin Master Gardeners, and various subject matter experts. The project is funded and supported by the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority. Before I introduce tonight's guests, I wanna let you know that on August 31st at 6 p.m., we will have another great webinar about emergency resource and training for people with disabilities in Marin entitled Powered and Prepared. We will be speaking with members of the Marin Center of Independent Living about the impact of disasters on people with access and functional needs. Tonight, we're fortunate to have Janet Ruiz, Director of Strategic Communications from the Insurance Information Institute, Amy Bach from Executive Directors United Policyholders, and we also have Joel Lauscher, the former Chief Deputy Commissioner with the California Department of the Insurance. They will talk to us about fire insurance. All, are you covered? And all you need to know about fire insurance and fire insurance in California. We strongly encourage you all to participate tonight by providing questions in writing through the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. Questions that cannot be addressed during tonight's conversation will be answered and posted on the Fire Safe Marin website. We ask that you please keep your questions related to the topic. Tonight's presentation will be recorded and available on Fire Safe Marin's YouTube channel, which includes many additional wildfire educational videos. After tonight's presentation, we'll have a roundtable discussion and an opportunity for you to ask additional questions of our presenters. So let's start by introducing Joel Lauscher. Joel, take it away. Hello, Chief Tyler. Thank you for having me here tonight. And uh, thank you to uh, everyone who's uh, watching this live or the video that comes. Uh, it's not often that people will put aside watching the Olympics or really doing anything else other than to avoid talking about insurance. But here we are, insurance is an important topic and I really hope we're able to provide some helpful information this evening. So um, if we could go to my next slide. So one thing I think you're gonna hear about from all of the speakers this evening are about avoiding being underinsured. And so I, I have a couple asks I'm gonna make of, of everyone, uh, things you could do just to get started on this path. And, and the first one is about looking at your homeowner's insurance limits and trying to determine if you have enough coverage. And because people really want to avoid talking about insurance, uh, typically, we, we tend to kind of try and ignore it and put it aside. And luckily, the likelihood of ever having a total loss is very, very remote. You know, it's millions of homes in California. The odds are you will never suffer a total loss. Unfortunately, that is what everyone thought that also suffered a total loss. And so, you know, it's important, uh, you know, that everyone take a look at their insurance coverage. It could mean, you know, that you're gonna pay a little more in premium. I think uh, you'll find it uh, reassuring, reassuring to know that you have uh, the right coverage should you ever need it. And so, what you need to do is check around in your region and see what construction costs are like. Um, I will say that when we were helping people who had claims in Napa and Sonoma, there are people whose uh, kind of the limits they had reflected what was a $200 per square foot construction cost. That might have sufficed 20 years ago. Um, but you know their limits were purely out of sync with the reality. A lot of times people set it and forget it, their limits. You know, they, they purchased their homeowner's insurance coverage 15 years ago with their insurer. They just rely on the inflation factor that an insurer applies each year to keep them up to date, but it's not enough. You, you really need to make sure 
And even the 350 I sh show here on my example slide is probably not nearly enough for many homes in Marin County. Next slide, please. So another issue that uh, we deal with with folks uh, who have had a loss is the difficulty they have putting together their contents claim, right? It's really challenging if your home is gone to try and remember everything you had. And it's actually a painful experience, right? To think of every little item that you have lost. Uh, I'm gonna suggest that just to get started, uh, this is an easy thing to do. It just takes a few minutes, walk through your house with your camera or, or you know, readily your cell phone and take pictures or film your contents. You know, your living room, family room, whatever, your bedrooms, inside your drawers and closets and cabinets. It, this doesn't take the place of doing a full inventory, but at least gets you a record of some kind of what your possessions are. Uh, they can, this, these films and pictures can also help you if you do have a claim in supporting you know, what you do put in your inventory. But this is just an easy get started thing on, on documenting the contents in your home. And next slide, please. And you know, since you've already, you take a look at your limits for your home, that's critical. Document your contents. The next thing you wanna do, maybe get outdoors and just get started. This is probably something everybody who's in the fire safe community already knows. But you know, for those who are new to thinking about these issues, if you just get started with those first five feet that are right adjacent to the exterior of your dwelling and trim back any woody, woody plants, move any firewood away from your home, any wooden lawn furniture you have stored up against your house or wood chips, dead leaves, debris. You wanna clear those five feet so nothing's right up against your home that can lead to igniting your home. So that's, again, just the start, just like these first two steps, this is the third step and this gets you outdoors. And just like that, you've gone from preparing for a fire loss by checking on your insurance coverage limits and documenting some of the possessions you have to working on your exterior and possibly preventing a fire loss and hopefully never having a need for your insurance. And it really doesn't take much time at all just to get the process started. And so that's what I'm hoping everyone will do. And I think you know, getting those first couple steps leads to the next. So if we could go to the next slide, please. All right, you already heard a mention uh, in, in the uh, facts, uh, fun facts about renters. And I will say one of the, one of the difficult challenges that uh, we come across when there's a local assistance center after a major wildfire event people coming in for help. And a lot of people coming in are renters and they do not have renters coverage. And they wonder, well, you know, what can they do now? There may be some community assistance plans or something to help them, but really um, the best way to protect yourself is to have renters coverage. And, um, you know, for some of you who, maybe our landlords, um, asking your renters to purchase renters coverage, not only is good for you, but it is more important for them. Uh, first, of course, they, they have the, the benefit then if there is a fire, they have additional living expense coverage. Usually for a renters policy, they'll either have a year of additional living expense coverage to find another rental, or they'll have some percentage of their contents limit. But at least, you know, if the place they were living in as a renter is gone, they, they get some funds to help them find another place to live. 
Next slide, please. So, of course, everything uh, about insurance is interesting, even though you may not have appreciated that in the past. But it, here's one little uh, fact that kind of uh, ties into my first slide about uh, bumping your limits up. You know, if, if you do look at your limits, and even if you only bump the limit up on your dwelling by 50,000, that bumps up your coverage package in total by 100,000. And that's because all the additional coverages that apply in a homeowner's policy are all percentages of that dwelling limit. So if you bump your dwelling limit up, your contents limit also goes up, your other structures limit goes up, your additional living expense coverage goes up, extended replacement costs goes up, your debris removal coverage and your uh, building code upgrades, they all go up. So $50,000 in dwelling limit increases gets you 100,000 or more in additional coverage in total. So a couple other things about homeowners insurance, good to know, is that most insurers will reject or charge sometimes significantly more premium if you have a home with a wood shake roof. Again, a lot of you probably know that, or maybe it's obvious, but for those who, you know, it's coming time to replace your roof, it's better to do that sooner than later. And at least some of the costs of replacing that roof will come in the, have the impact of lower insurance premiums, sometimes significantly lower because wood shake roofs are a real hazard for insurers. And many people get canceled simply because of wood shake roofs. And just a reminder, homeowners policies don't include coverage for earthquake, flood, or land movement. Just something you should know. And if you're in a uh, earthquake region, which uh, includes Marin, unfortunately, you should seriously consider earthquake coverage. Next slide, please. So I, I just wanted you uh, give everyone a, a little idea of how uh, insurers really focus on wildfire in terms of their underwriting and rates. And here we have a picture, a satellite image of San Anselmo area. Uh, you can see the couple uh, the icons for fire engines. Those are where fire stations are located in San Anselmo. But and insurers take your fire department into account when they rate your home or underwrite, you know, who's eligible. And you're very lucky in uh, Marin County, you have some great fire departments with uh, terrific scores, protection class one, protection class two for many of your uh, urban fire departments. So that is one consideration, but wildfire model uh, risk scores really focus just on the home uh, where it's located. And as noted here, really the, the key is the slope, the fuel and the access to your home. So here you're looking at a property, you know, not too far from a, a very urban area and a, a major you know, school, you can see the pool and the fields, but this particular home probably is, uh, has a little dent denser foliage, perhaps is on a slope and might have a little more difficult access. This may not be a super challenging home. It's not far from main arteries, but this is kind of a, a little snapshot of what insurers look for when they uh, are, are, or what their models use to assign wildfire risk scores. And wildfire risk scores have a major impact, not only on rates, but whether you're gonna get coverage or not. And because they've only come into play in the last few years, um, there's something that, you know, you might've been with that same insurer for 20 years, no losses. And you wonder why did I get non-renewed? And a likely uh, cause is because they decided to write uh, well, to implement wildfire risk scores and ultimately to des decide to uh, limit their book of business to homes with lower risk scores. And 
So this home probably still makes it. You move a little bit to the left into denser forest or bigger slope, and you may become ineligible. Next slide, please. And, and just to give you a little idea of the difference in premium that happens, this is uh, actually from a rate filing, filing that, uh, that uh, one major insurer made, and it shows uh, this graph in the blue uh, bars, you see where the current premium levels are. The green bar is what the insurer is proposing right now in terms of increases. And the, the gold bar is the one that they say that their loss ratios actually justify. So you can see on the far left, those are homes with actually a very low wildfire score or, or moderate scores. This is uh, generally probably a core logic model. Core logic and Fireline are kind of the two most commonly used models currently today. So those uh, premiums are hardly going to be moving at all. But as you go up the scoring chart, you see the amount of increase is itself kind of accelerating and those green bars are rising up significantly above the current premium averages. And really more worrying is those gold bars um, because while the insurer in this case isn't asking to move their rates to coincide with those gold bars now, um, you can imagine that uh, the next filing rate filing will probably move those premiums up another notch closer to their own indications of where they believe rates should be. And uh, in the end, you see the, the homes with the higher scores are gonna be paying four times more than they might have just a couple of years before, or possibly be non-renewed if they have that high of a score. So next slide, please. So one thing, and I, I think you're going to hear a lot of, uh, about this from the other uh, panelists as well, and that's because it is super important. There are so many non-renewals taking place as insurers uh, incorporate these wildfire models into their rates, into their underwriting, and actually as the uh, numbers of wildfires uh, continue to occur every year. Um, you know, they get more concerned about having wildfire risk. Uh, if you do get non-renewed, ask your agent, of course, to shop for you. If your agent doesn't have another uh, insurer in his or her book of business to, that will take your policy coverage, you know, try other local agents, a um, lot of great agents in Marin County and, and surrounding counties or many insurers also write directly online, right, over the phone. And just to help you shop, uh, the California Department of Insurance has a great top 10 list, how to search for coverage. You're gonna hear from United Policyholders, who I work with now, who does a terrific job of helping consumers in, in the same area of searching for coverage. And uh, something I, I think you'll hear again and again, don't settle for a fair plan policy unless you have absolutely tried every possible, at least admitted insurer in our marketplace and uh, hopefully non-admitted or surplus lines insurers as well. Fair plan coverage, very limited. You just don't wanna go there unless you absolutely have to. So thank you that I'll, I have some other slides, but um, I'll stop right there. Well, oh, fantastic information. You know, you really lit up the question board as well. Um, several of the questions are going to be answered on, uh, live by both Janet or um, Amy, but um, people are sort of asking about this, this wildland score. Can you talk a little bit more about how they can find out what their score is or what it is? A little more about that? Yeah, you know, one of the, the main issues with uh, current wildfire scores is they really lack transparency. Uh, there are many uh, insurers who will share with you what your score is. And um, the, the issue there, though, um, is 
there's not really much of a chance for a consumer to validate or dispute that score. The score is the result of a, a uh, you know, a calculation that involves three components. And so you really don't know how much, you know, the vegetation component was or the slope component really, um, unless you're on an absolutely flat, you know, piece of property or you are downtown and, you know, it's obvious that, uh, that you don't have that kind of wildfire risk. It, it is one of the issues and the Department of Insurance actually has some draft regs. They're looking to create not only more transparency, but also um, to require that the models take into account property level mitigation. And as you can see from that, those three simple components, they currently, the main uh, wildfire models, don't take into account anything you've done on your property. And Joel, one more question, and then we, we've got a ton of questions that we'll, we'll also pick up at the round table piece, but just one more, a lot of questions about the FAIR plan. Um, people just, you know, stunned at the increase in cost, not sustainable for them. Um, you know, should a person accept an agent's offer to place their coverage into the FAIR plan? Yeah, you know, ultimately uh, that we say it's the insurer of last resort and that's with good cause. Some agents, uh, most agents only represent a few insurers. And once they, uh, if you've been uh, non-renewed by one of the companies they represent, then they'll try to market you with their other insurers they represent. But it's possible none of those insurers will take you. And that agent may say, well, I can place you with the fair plan but really you should check other agents or direct writers or whatever you have to do. You know, the agent may only be offering you what the agent has available to, to her or to him. You, you really wanna make sure you've asked every one of the 50 insurers that, or plus insurers that write homeowners insurance before you settle for a fair plan policy and even try surplus lines carriers. Joel, thank you. We we'll look forward to talking with you a little bit more uh, in a few minutes. Um, so ne next up is uh, Janet Ruiz, and Janet is the Director of Strategic Communications uh, and Insurance Information Institute. Uh, Janet, welcome. Thanks so much. Um, I'm Jan I am Janet Ruiz. I live in Northern California. I represent the Insurance Information Institute, which is a nonprofit trade association, and we are supported by the insurance industry. Our mission is to help people understand insurance, what it does and how it works. So let's go to the next slide. And as we're going to the next slide, I just want to let you know, I also live in Northern California, and I'm a part of a fire safe council and live in a firewise community. So what do I do every year when I get my annual renewal notice? Stuff it in my file cabinet. No, uh, that's the time to look at it. Just 15 minutes and you can find out how much you are insured for. And like Joel said, you should then look um, to, you know, do those math calculations. Hey, uh, $350 a square foot was the lowest price you could get in Santa Rosa after the Tubbs fire, and it went up from there. So look at your square footage, get your details right, and then look at the local construction costs. Check in with the Marin Builders Association and find out what the um, amount of you know, average construction cost is in your area. It may be up to 400 or $500 a square foot. Look at the number of bedrooms and bathrooms, windows, doors, fireplaces. What type of roof and siding do you have? Uh, Joel talked about wood shake roofs. You know, you definitely wanna be uh, getting a class A fire resistant roof. And the types of finishes that you have in your house, you know, if they're more expensive, less expensive. And then you don't 
um, add the cost of land into your coverage for your building and structures, which is your coverage A. So how do you prevent underinsurance? The demand surge, as we talked about, can increase the cost of materials and labors. And we certainly saw that in 2017, after the uh, Tubbs fire in Santa Rosa, which is you know, probably the closest one we've had recently to Marin County. So when you're looking at your coverage A and thinking, you know, my house is 3,000 square feet, um, it now is an average four to $500 a square foot. Uh, that's kind of your basic calculation. But um, as Joel also mentioned, there are extra coverages on your policy and these are very important and they'll be listed on your renewal. So say your coverage A, I'm gonna do easy math here, is 500,000. Um, if you have an extended replacement cost coverage of 20%, then you're gonna get another $100,000 if the building, if the demand surge has increased the cost of materials and labors. What about building code upgrade coverage? Well, you know, the building codes now require sprinklers, they require solar panels, they re require class A roofs. Um, in the house I live in, it was built in 1979. Um, I would actually have to build it six feet up because of some flood concerns in my area. So I have 50% building code upgrade coverage on my house. Uh, there are automatic annual adjustments for inflation on your policy and built into it. Um, so be sure to check these on your policy and add all that amount up and think, could I rebuild this house for this much money? And then maybe you need a small business or agricultural policy. My husband repairs and um, restores guitars, so we often have five or six of other people's guitars in our house. Uh, we, so we have that small business coverage as well. Next slide, please. And will my policy replace all my belongings? Joel pointed that as well, that your contents are usually a percentage of coverage A. You can get 25, 50% or 75% of, of your coverage A, that dwelling cost on your um, contents. So, you know, when I was at the height of buying, I might want a lot of coverage. You know, when I downsize, when I'm gonna travel more or retire, I may want less. So look at those carefully and get what you actually need. Update your policy after remodels and home improvements. Oh, I don't want to call my insurance agent. I don't want them to look at me. They're going to charge me more money. It's often not that much more money. But if you've added footage, changed the footprint of your house, uh, you definitely want to be able to replace that in the case of a wildfire. So talk to your agent and your company. The more you talk to them ahead of time, if you have a loss in a wildfire, you're gonna already have that communication going. So don't be afraid to talk to them. It's not gonna put red flags on your policy. And then as Joel said, keep receipts for major purchases in the cloud. You know, it is much easier now. You can take pictures of things, you can store them in the cloud, even your receipts. And that makes it a lot easier when you have to replace things after a loss. Next slide, please. So what should I do if I get non-renewed by my insurance company? The first thing you should do is go back to your company and ask if there's something you can do to mitigate the risk and keep your policy. Um, and then if there isn't, shop and compare. Like Joel said, uh, folks that are local, brokers, agents, they're going to know what's really available in your area, uh, which insurance companies are writing, and which ones might uh, qualify you as an insured. 
uh, understand that there are options he mentioned that we have admitted, which is your standard insurers you know. The surplus lines, maybe Lloyd's of London companies or others, they're all very good um, and they all have good insurance to offer. Um, so participate in your local mitigation efforts. You're already here with the Fire Safe Council, so you're doing that. Uh, look into Fireways USA. I think Rin County has the most Fireways USA communities in the nation. So you're really doing good things that will keep insurance more affordable and more available in your area. Next slide, please. So here's some takeaways from me today. You know, insurance is a crucial financial safety net. Um, so don't forget about insurance. Look at it early during your home process, home buying process if you're buying a new home. Don't just take what the realtor says, hey, here's some insurance. Look around, find out what it's going to cost. Take an active role in assessing your coverage type and limits. And again, update your policy annually. And the easiest time to do that is when it comes in the mail. Um, make and update your home inventory. We talked about renter's insurance. And you know, if you have loved ones with paid off homes, make sure they maintain their uh, coverage as well. You're in control. Uh, make your insurance your partner before critical during, of course, and after a wildfire. But start talking to them now, get to know who's in the office. Um, it's much easier if you have a loss. Coverage amounts are up to you to decide because you live in the home and you know all the specific things that your home has that you want to replace. And that's it for my slides. Chief Tyler, do you have questions for me? I certainly do. Thank you, Janet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the questions that came up early that you had uh, said you'd like to respond to live is uh, from David Hansen. It says, we have found it difficult to get insurance companies to acknowledge that the coverage they are willing to offer is too low. We cannot get insurance that would cover the cost of the replacement. So if that happens to you, you have to insist um, and uh, most companies have recognized that in California, they need to offer more insurance. Uh, there were a few, and I would say around the time of the Santa Rosa fires, I found that to be true, that had been resisting that. But at this point, uh, I think most insurers understand that the cost of building materials and labor in California, it far exceeds that of other states. So I would insist, you can always ask for a supervisor or an executive if you're not getting the answers you need from the person you're talking with. All right. Um, you know, Janet, with all the fires that we're seeing uh, in the reports in the news, um, across California and a lot in Northern California now. Do you think insurance companies are going to continue to write homeowner insurance in wildfire risk areas? You know, that's a really good question. And the answer is yes. Uh, we really want to stay in California and support the insurance uh, market here. Um, and we've been working really closely with the legislature and the California Department Department of Insurance to standardize mitigation efforts so that we can include those in the, you know, the ways that we give discounts and availability to people. And uh, that's really coming to pass. It's in the works right now. We have a few companies who have already gotten uh, those type of mitigation efforts um, included in premiums and discounts and many more who have it in the works. And this will give you the opportunity if you wanna do mitigation, which I think I'm speaking to the choir again, um, that you will have those opportunities to be recognized for the mitigation you do, which will keep insurance in California. But the answer is definitely yes. Insurance companies wanna be in California 
again, we're the fifth largest uh, economy. Uh, we have a huge insurance market. And so we're doing everything we can to stick with you. A lot of us live here as well and our homeowners and of course want to be insured too. So great question and uh, thank you for asking that. Here's a question about just a specific item that an that a individual feels is very, very important to them. They want to know that if they've got really one expensive item, like a grand piano that's no longer made, can, they, uh, can, you, can you apply the reimbursement of all the loss to one valuable item? Um, special insurance for that one item is too expensive. Okay, um, well, that was going to be my first uh, point was that a lot of times you want to put that on a personal articles policy uh, because then it's going to be insured for uh, more perils, including earthquake, et cetera, and you get to set the value for it. Um, if uh, it comes down to the situation that you're talking about, um, the insurance com company is going to look at what the replacement cost is uh, to get another one of equal value. Uh, that's the way insurance works. Um, so again, um, the best way is on a personal articles policy. And if it's too expensive with your insurance company, you might check with some others, uh, ask an agent or a broker to help you with that as well. Okay, um, this is a question I hear sometimes uh, from the public. Uh, this is from Jerry Merrill. It says, do insurance companies give discounts for homes with outside automatic sprinklers? Are they more likely to maintain coverage if the house has this system? A lot of, lot of different systems out there trying to be sold at the, at the moment. There are a lot of systems. Um, I think the uh, new uh, building code actually looks for the inside ones. Um, the outdoor ones can be effective if you have water pressure, et cetera. And they would be considered with uh, a larger uh, amount of mitigation. So it wouldn't probably get you a discount by itself, but it would be viewed as a positive with all the other efforts that you're making for mitigation. And this is a, another question about you know, the coverage uh, limits or gaps. They want to, they're, they're saying that their current insurer is reluctant to cover them beyond certain coverage amount. Uh, rather than a whole new policy, can they get supplemental or gap, a gap policy added? Uh, no, you would need to get your coverage A to what you want, uh, but you can use those other extended replacement building code upgrade coverages uh, to enhance your coverage A uh, for your uh, building structures. Uh, so that would be one way to go about it. And then again, I would uh, recommend that you insist on what you need and ask for someone um, with more authority to speak to um, if you're not getting the results you want. Um, another question that we have here, I think Joel wanted to answer also, but I'm going to toss it your way. Does homeowner insurance cover fire damage to the home when the fire was originally triggered by an earthquake or a gas line leak? Yes, uh, fire coverage is always uh, any type of fire that happens. So a gas line leak, earth, you know, we call it fire following an earthquake, the fire portion of it will be covered. Um, if there's a way to separate the earthquake from the fire, um, that would also be taken into consideration. But, you know, if your house burns down, um, then the fire coverage will cover that. Janet, uh, this is from um, someone named Kathy who represents a, uh, an Inverness nonprofit uh, that owns a building that's lost its insurance in 2019. So they did get coverage, but it was at seven times the cost, which is unsustainable for them. Why can't, this is the question, why can't we get covered from, uh, the, from same companies that homeowners use? We're told that they don't cover nonprofits and the county library is actually uh, their tenant, they said. So you would need a commercial policy unless you are a homeowner living in the home. Uh, the 
I guess good news is the California Fair Plan um, will now be taking on some commercial. Uh, so you could check with them. Uh, the also, if you're working with a broker, um, I would be looking at different companies. Um, I know there's a company called Church Mutual that specializes in um, nonprofits. And they also um, work with, they have uh, wildfire prevention services. You know, that's, that's a company that I've heard about that specializes in nonprofits and I'm sure there's more. Um, so definitely check with a broker um, and the California um, Department of Insurance also has some great resources. Okay, more questions flying in. I love this. Um, someone is asking about, could their premium be affected by the condition of their neighbor's property? Great question. You know, um, that's always a challenge and that's why uh, at the insurance industry is very supportive of Firewise USA communities uh, because it does help to get the community mitigation, uh, which is going to be much better for all of us. Um, and the fire safe councils, I know uh, the fire departments are doing assessments. Um, so all these things do have some bearing, uh, but at the end of the day, you're gonna be judged by what you've done and some of the things that Joel mentioned, like the slope, the access, et cetera. Um, this is an interesting question here uh, for someone that just joined. It says, my insurer told me about residents in paradise who are rebuilding. Residents are required to carry two policies following the rebuild, one to provide, one provided by the state government and one through an insurance company. Can you elaborate on this? Um, I don't know of anything uh, offered by the state government. Um, if they are referring, usually when you're building a home, um, it's called builder's risk. Um, and it's, it's the insurance policy that you would get through your insurance company. Um, if you're referring to the California Fair Plan, and if that was the only coverage you can get, that's not government run. It's actually funded by the insurance companies, um, which is a little known fact. Um, so yes, we do fund that program. And if you have a California Fair Plan policy, then you're only getting fire insurance um, and you have other needs. So especially on a building site, theft, vandalism, uh, you know, liability. Um, so yes, then you would have to get the second policy, which is a difference in conditions, or sometimes we call it a wraparound, so that you would have full coverage on your building site. Janet, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And if you could stick around for the round table, we'll pepper you with some more questions. <laughs> thank you. I, I want to now um, introduce Amy Bach, who's the Executive Director for United Policyholders. Welcome, Amy, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Chief Tyler. Um, and it's just um, it kind of, I mean, as you know, with insurance, uh, we, we, we're nerds, you know, those of us who follow it, we get excited when this many people are paying attention. So again, I echo Joel's comments and uh, great that you're here tonight, uh, you know, and your, your Fire Safe Council has assembled um, three of people who actually really are on the, on the, cutting edge of what's going on in the market. So good on all of you for being here. Great questions coming in. Um, United Policyholders, nonprofit. Uh, next slide. I am Amy Bach. I am one of the founders of the organization. We have been um, your friend in the insurance business. I don't know. I always want to joke about that with the um, Diamond Guys commercial, but that's really what we are. We're a nonprofit consumer group that focuses on insurance, giving you buying guidance, uh, giving you claim guidance and helping solve problems like the one that we are talking about today. Um, next slide, please. So we don't take money from insurance companies, but we know a lot about insurance. Um, and uh, you can learn more about our work at uphelp.org. Um, and these are two of our tools. The one that you, uh, on the right there, is uh, the Savvy Consumer's Guide to Buying Insurance, where we kind of captured, you know, 30 years worth of helping people 
after disasters where their home insurance gets road tested at a high speed, um, we turn those into buying tips for you. Um, the, the reality though is that you're in a unique situation now in California um, where we're not as much, um, it's, it's, it's not as much a buyer's market. Um, you have less options than you used to. So you're better off going to our website and getting the most up-to-date information. Next slide. Next slide, please. Well, Sorry. I'm gonna keep going because I know we don't have a lot of time. Um, so uh, the questions that have been coming in to the, oh, what happened? Do we, there we go. Okay, so some of the things I wanna reinforce are really are things that you heard from both Joel and Janet. So even though Janet speaks for the insurance companies and I speak for consumers, um, we do agree on some things, right? Two thirds of the people who lose homes and wildfires don't have enough insurance on their homes. So you heard Joel talking about that. You're going to hear me talking about it. Don't blindly trust that your insurer agent have adequately protected you. Now, I, I love hearing when Janet says um, your insurer is your partner, but the reality is that probably most of you have been told for decades um, you're in good hands and you don't need to worry. You've got insurance and you're fine. Um, but that really turns out not to be true uh, after wildfires. Hopefully you're never going to lose your home in a wildfire. You won't need it, but you're here to be safe, not sorry. Right. So I'm here to tell you that um, there is a bit of a disconnect between what insurance agents typically will tell you and what reality is. Right. Reality is um, that you know, the insurance company and the agent, they want to sell you a policy, they want to close the deal, put you in the customer column, right? You uh, have a very major asset to protect. So really, you do need to pay more attention to your insurance than you thought you did. So even if your agent has said, oh, you're fine, chances are that you may not be. And that's, you know, some of these questions that have come in um, with people saying, well, I asked my insurer, I said I wanted more and they said they wouldn't sell me more. That is some of the reality right now on the ground. Insurers are, are definitely nervous about California. They have seen, you know, we've had some bad years of wildfires. Um, and so they are looking to limit the, the amount of risk. So you do have to be um, assertive in making sure that you are insuring your dwelling to value. And as Joel said, that's going to help you be insured for your other categories. Um, our website is there for you to get more answers to these questions after tonight. Uh, next slide. Thank you. So because it, the situation has changed in California uh, since the 2017 fires, it has definitely become harder for people in areas that have had fires uh, to get and keep their home insurance. Our organization has had to ramp up the work that we're doing to help bring you solutions. We have done webinars, uh, which you can watch. They're all free. We've had fair plan staff come on um, to educate you about options. And, and then we have publications. The two main ones I've got links to here. Um, one of them dropped by your insurer in California, where to go for help. Um, and then the low down from up on the California fair plan. Um, and then you can watch these two uh, webinars that we've done with insurance agents. If you do get a non-renewal notice, you have 70 day, 75 days to shop. We encourage you to take every one of those days if you need them. So don't sit around thinking, oh my God, you know, it is scary, um, but you always do have the fair plan. That's going to be there for you. It's not perfect, but it is there. So you need to, and, um, and pretty much, you know, you're not going to be out there without. It's more a question of whether you'll be able to afford it. Um, and that's a serious challenge, of course, for a lot of people. And we are working very hard uh, to, to, to tame the beast and bring uh, the market back into where it should be, where home insurance, instead of being in the realm of 8,000 bucks a year, bring it back down to where most people can afford it. Um, and how, how are we working to do that? Next slide, please. Um, we are working to, um, to 
uh, get standards in place so that when you take steps to make your home less likely to be damaged or burned, your insurer will reward you by either keeping you as a customer or giving you a better rate. But before we get back to that, just a few more points I wanna hammer home that you've already heard. Very easy to inventory your assets. Take your cell phone, turn on the, put the camera, it, the video setting, walk around talking as you go and narrate. Open drawers, photograph what's in the drawers, and then send that, that video to a, a safe place where you'll be able to find it if God forbid you ever need it. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, questions to ask an insurer or agent. Um, you know, we would love your insurer to be to treat you like a partner. It doesn't feel like it right now, um, but but certainly, um, insurance companies have a lot of expertise, right, on construction costs. They should know how much insurance you should have. They pay claims all the time. So I feel that you absolutely should be asking these questions to your agent. Um, and if they can't answer them, try to find another agent. But of course, in today's world, you know, it's, it's um, a lot of people are just worrying about holding on to the in policy they have. Um, and not so much, you know, you heard Janet say, some people are worried about calling the insurer and calling attention to themselves. You know, people want to fly under the radar. They don't want to get dropped. At the same time, you want that insurance that you're paying for to be there for you. So asking these questions is still important. Um, even today, when you don't have as much choices and you're not as much in the driver's seat as you had been. Um, in terms of there being a lot of options for you. There are less options, but there still are options. And you can still try to customize your policy for, uh, for the true value of your assets. That's really the challenge here. Um, and so all these things are on our website. Next slide, please. It's just important to understand the dynamic, you know, that, that uh, you think, oh, well, my insurance agent they just, they get paid a commission, right? So they probably want to sell me more. Um, and so I'm going to resist that. You know, I need to tell you like, that's not um, the way it really is. Yes, they do make a commission um, on what they sell you, but it's never worth it to them to try to push you to buy more if they think that you're, that's going to, that's going to cause you to go somewhere else. Um, their basic objective is to is to get you in the door and get a policy written. Um, and then their commission, it's not gonna be that much more if they push you to get higher limits. And they understand that most consumers do not wanna spend more than they have to on their insurance. It's not something people are excited about. Reminder that flood and earthquake damage are not covered unless you purchase a separate policy. Uh, last, uh, next slide, please. shopping considerations. And this is just reality. You know, I, UP, we're consumer groups. So we're going to give you the straight scoop. We had to, we're not trying to sell you anything. We're just trying to help you make good decisions. When you go to an agent today, they don't want to lose your auto business, right? So if you, so, so they may be more likely to put you in the fair plan and sell you this DIC, difference in conditions policy, um, so they can keep your car insurance and then they are to try to say, well, I can't help you go to somebody else, right? So there are some agents that are putting people in the fair plan when there may be other options. So for us, you know, we don't want you in the fair plan unless that really is the only company that's willing to take you. That's why we have offered these webinars, you know, to try to help you know that there are insurance companies out there that you may never have heard of. So we're giving you some guidance on, well, are they okay? Do they have enough money to pay the claims? How do I find them? So a fair plan policy plus a DIC is the last resort way to replicate the protection that you have through a normal company, right? And that's the way it is now. Now, a normal company, a state farm, an all state brand names you've heard of, there are other kinds of insurance companies. They're called surplus or non-admitted. And basically they are companies that have decided they wanna be a little bit less regulated. Um, so there's a little bit of risk in going with those companies um, if they are small, because they are not protected by the state guarantee fund. So if they were to 
for there was one company in paradise in the campfire that um that went belly up because uh they had a lot of customers that that had total losses and they couldn't cover it so the guarantee fund stepped in but if you go a company like lloyd's of london they're a surplus company they have they are adequately financed so again this is just about shopping and comparing uh next slide please so you already heard from joel uh that uh what we know uh that yeah you got to do everything you can for your property and you're that's what why you're all here right you you already understand the concept of engaging in your community's fire prevention efforts and risk reduction efforts because yeah your neighbors um affect you as well um so we 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 do know a lot more now about uh what conditions you want to have around your home with defensible space and you don't want wood fencing coming right up to the home things that will make it easier for firefighters like Chief Tyler and his team to save your home. Next slide, please. So yeah, we talked about the fire line score. A lot of people asked in the chat, how do I find out my score? Very hard to do. I think the legislature is gonna, gonna fix this soon, um, uh, but fire line is only one of these scoring models. So there's some other scoring models that are coming in that may be a little bit more uh, helpful to those of you who have made your home's less likely to burn. Next slide, please. So uh, why do I um, love your chief, Tyler? Because he is a very um, active participant in a working group that our organization has been had going for quite a while, so is Joel. Um, and we are trying to get standards in place in California. We're marching along so that you will get insurance rewards for uh, either you will be able to hold on to your insurance if you make your home less likely to, to burn or you will be able to get a better rate we would like both um and that is a work in progress um next slide so again um my organization has no uh we're not trying to sell you anything we just want to help right that's a picture of me with a fire marshal um in uh, Arinda, uh, going on a ride along, a homeowner got non a non-renewal notice from Allstate. Uh, he called his local fire department. The local fire department said, yeah, we'll come out. Chief Tyler, they do that all the time. We'll come out, we'll, we'll tell you what we think you ought to do uh, to make it less likely that your home's gonna burn and then we'll give you something you can send to your insurance company. Well, um, very eye-opening. So what we're trying to do is um, is, is just keep on building on the great work that fire safe councils, fire wise communities and proactive um, fire officials like Chief Tyler are doing in their communities and then really get insurers to, um, to fulfill that promise that Janet uh, said that to be your partner um, and not just to punish you uh, because you live in a beautiful place that's vulnerable. So I really thank you for your attention and your time um, and, and your great questions. And I look forward to answering any more that I can. Fantastic, Amy. Thank you so much. Um, a lot of people, what you're saying is really resonating with them. Um, they think that you're really introducing some, some good reality into the discussion. You know, they feel like, on the, you know, that insurance companies are really not there to help. They're, they're just there to make money, um, that they're in control, not, not people. What do, you, what do you feel about that? I mean, look, you know, Janet said it's true. They, of course, they want to do business in California, um, but when when they want um, some political change or when things aren't quite going their way, you know, they have been known to pull back as they have been um, to try to to try to um, get what they want, you know. And look, no one's going to argue, you know, that the that that. Eight, you know, eighteen thousand structures, and you know, seven thousand in destroyed in paradise, and seven thousand in, in um, you know, Sonoma and Napa aren't a big deal to insurers. But you've always got to keep things in context, right? There are millions of homes in California that insurers are getting premium income on. So yeah, sometimes they lose the bet and they have to pay out money. Um, do they have more power than they should? Um, I would say the legislature um, is 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 definitely on the case here. Um, and we're trying to find the right balance, right? Uh, between um, the reality of 
risk being higher than we thought it was in the past, you know, fire behavior, droughts, climate change. You can't, you can't deny it. At the same time, you know, insurers have, I think, have overreacted. I think they really, you know, when part, part of the insurance department's job is to um, keep some order and, and prevent insurers from overreacting. And that's why we have the non-renewal moratoriums. The legislature um, and the department made that happen. And so, you know, that is helping to somewhat keep things stable. And then uh, we're working very hard to improve what the fair plan offers because, hey, you know, if they're the only game in town, we want to make that uh, a little easier for you as homeowners so you don't have to buy that and a DIC. And uh, since you're talking about the fair plan, you know, what kind of holes might there be in that protection that, that people need to think about? I mean, the big ones are water and theft um, and and liability. Um, so, uh, you know, those are those are the big ones. Okay. You know, you know, liability. I'm, if somebody gets injured on your property and, and sues you, you know, your a normal homeowner policy gives you a lawyer and 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 all that. A fair plan policy doesn't. Okay, Janet, or excuse me, Amy. I'd like to bring Janet and um, and Joel back in here, and let's let's hit some of these uh, other questions that we can. We've got, you know, about ten or fifteen minutes or so to go still. Um, some really interesting things on here. Um, someone was asking about. Yeah you know, clearing the hazmat, you know, that is, you know, once the building burns down and then you've got to, you've got to come in and get that cleared out before, you know, new construction can begin that they feel they've heard that a lot of the policy gets chewed up uh, in the hazmat. Can you guys give, shed some light on that part of uh, insurance? Sure. I was actually typing the answer <laughs> right before we switch back. Um, so generally speaking, what I've found, because I work on all the wildfires um, around the state and some others in the West, um, most of the time the counties are setting up programs where they'll accept whatever the uh, percentage uh, the insurance company pays for has met. Uh, they'll accept that as full payment, whether it costs more um, or not. Um, and then uh, you do have the option to get it cleared yourself. So we did see some people say like in Paradise um, where they uh, decided to clear it themselves because they wanted to get it done quickly and get their building process started faster because when you go with the county programs, you do have to wait till they get to everybody and that fire, um, you know, was the most homes we've ever seen lost. So it was um, a different situation than what we normally see. You know, even if it's a couple thousand homes, it doesn't take that long. But with 18,000, it was uh, quite a process. However, they have gotten through it. Um, it should not eat up your policy. Um, I, th I think that... Um, might have been some uh, odd cases. Uh, maybe people didn't have the correct insurance. Um, I, I have not heard that it ate up a whole policy. Okay. Um, we have, uh, Arlene is asking about which sites should one use to verify the financial viability and geographic diversity of an insurer? So, um we have a uh, on our on the uphelp.org site. We have um, you can use the search box and type in um, like financial condition, or we have a list. There's um, of the their uh, bests. There's a couple of rating agencies, um, and we have links to those. Um, Best is kind of the one that that has um, it seems to be a little bit the most consumer friendly. Yeah, and I'll, I'll add that um, every admitted insurer, and you'll, you'll find those on the Department of Insurance website, is backed by that California Insurance Guarantee Association that Amy mentioned earlier, or Janet men mentioned, and that provides up to a million dollars towards a dwelling loss if your insurer were to go insolvent, and $500,000 for each of the other coverages. So there is a, a pretty solid backup that has been increased significantly in the last few years in, in the payouts that it can offer 
in the extremely rare case there's a admitted carrier insolvency. The fair plan is backed by the industry and so does have a lot of resources at its disposal. So there's not an issue with the fair plan either. Right. And I put an answer to one of the questions. I don't know if everyone's going to get to see it, a link to our publication called How to Check an Insurer's Financial Stream. Janet, right. do you guys offer that on your website as well at the IIIC? Um, we usually recommend uh, checking AM Best. Uh, that's you know usually the major company uh, that does that. Um, so AM Best is our recommendation. You know, people are asking for, you know, they want to follow these links. Um, and so uh, I want to make sure Fire Safe Marine can get those links together um, so that so that people can go back and find those as a resource uh, on their page. Right. And then um, so uh, also everyone should know that this uh, this is being recorded, this webinar, and, and it will be uh, available on the website uh, shortly on Fire Safe Marin. Uh, so you get a chance to look at it again, fast forward, you know, you don't care about that part. Uh, you can, you can hone on what you're interested in. Um, Sarah Butler asked a question about, you know, if she had, she had to get insurance with the California fair plan since her other policy was canceled a year ago and she'd like to find a regular insurance company, but is it going to be harder now, um, since they already have the fair plan or what, what's going on there? No, that, that's a great question. Uh, you should always continue to shop once you get your fair plan policy and leave the fair plan as quickly as possible. And I think Amy covered that as well. Um, so it's not the end of your shopping. It's always a continuation. Um, it gives you coverage so that you're not without, but continue shopping. Um, as Joel said, the Department of Insurance has uh, you know, shopping guidelines, and then, you know, local brokerages. So, and maybe you need to go to a few of them. Uh, but the thing is, is um, some, some insurers may hit their capacity and others don't. Or, um, you know, you'll hear of insurers, and I don't uh, mention names very often, but um, I saw a press release on one major insurance company that had a new a fire tool and they're adding 30,000 policies. So, um, you know, it's, it's uh, an evolving marketplace um, and no fair plan isn't like a bad mark on your report card at all. No, uh, no. not at all. No, and I wanna reinforce what Janet just said, not a bad mark and also the situation is dynamic. I mean, insurers, they live on premium income, right? That's what, that's the gas in their car, right? So even though they're making a big, you know, fuss and everything, they still want, they, there's, there's still some competition and, and the situation changes week to week, you know? So I talked to, we have agent broker advisors and I ask them, you know, on a regular basis and they'll say, well, you know, last week, I tried to insure a house up in Tahoe and, you know, Lloyd said no. And then this week they said yes. And, you know, rumors, I, I'll drop names, but people are saying, you know, State Farms picking up people. So, and, you know, Delos is a new one, you know, so you really got to, unfortunately, you do have to put some time in here to, to really poking around um, because, you know, the, there's competition, but you got to dig. You know, earlier, Joel, you talked about, and more than one of you talked about, doing either the, the home hardening efforts or clearing the vegetation, the five, zero, zero five foot zone. Um, are you finding that insurance companies are rewarding customers for reducing their risks? Are, is a Firewise uh, community, you know, that you now are participating fully in, is that, is that really helping? Actually, uh, it's a great question. You know, uh, the tools that I mentioned had the more simplistic slope and access and, and fuel load. Uh, Janet just mentioned a company that's adding 30,000 insureds. And the reason they're able to do that is they've uh, adopted a new wildfire model that looks at home mitigation and roof type. And so they're able to mine you know, the, the gems out of the thing, policies that have been overlooked with more simplistic tools and, and the new models are recognizing the home mitigation steps. So it has certainly been an issue that lack of recognition of things homeowners have done. 
but I think that is changing and the department is uh, considering regulations that would in require insurers to use models that recognized home mitigation and either write homes, more homes, provide discounts for those homes would be the likely impact. And I'd like to put in a plug for the Insurance Institute for Business and Home Safety. Um, that's IBHS is their uh, IBHS.org. But they, um, they have been doing a research for many years now and are um, collaborating to get the right standards and the right home hardening. Uh, they do a lot of uh, ember testing. Uh, they work, I know, Amy, you work with them as well. Uh, the fire services work with them. Um, we had a lot more science on hurricanes uh, because they've uh, been, well, you know, studied longer. Um, so wildfire has really only uh, been an issue in the last 10 years. It's been studied some, but, you know, now we're fast forwarding. We also have a lot more technology now. Um, and, you know, we live in California with Silicon Valley. So we see companies like the one Amy mentioned, uh, Get Delos, that, um, have been able to really fast forward and use technology um, to your advantage. So it's a good yeah. thing. Thank you. Chief Tyler, I would yeah. like to address one thing we hadn't talked about and I, this has come up in some of our past uh, wildfire scenarios and that's rural areas. And I forgot to mention this when yeah. I was speaking, but your homeowner's policy typically only gives 10% of the dwelling limit for other structures. Now, it probably doesn't matter to you if you have an attached garage, hmm. but as we get into some of the rural areas, such as happens in Marin, you know, when you get outside the urban areas, people have barns or outbuildings. And a lot of times those people end up underinsured for the outbuildings, which can be major structures in a lot of scenarios. And I just want to mention, yeah. if you do have that scenario, we do. Most insurers will allow you to increase the coverage for your other structures. All right, Joel, Great thank point. you. And I, last question here for Amy. Um, this just gets into politics, Amy. I'm giving it to you because I know you, you <laughs> have a lot of advocacy. <laughs> Uh, but but you know what are politicians doing to try and address this? You know um, insurers that have in, refused to write home insurance that, that raises you know premiums you know um, exponentially. You know uh, is there any uh, any certain politicians that people should look for? Any assembly or senate bills that they maybe want to track? So uh, last year there was a lot of action. Um, insurers came in with a proposal and we came in with the department with our, a proposal together. They clashed, neither of them got through. Um, and so we've kind of all gone back to try to be a little bit more kumbaya, I think, and go for this mitigation uh, program. We're trying to kind of fast forward that, you know, um, but I'd say, you know, this, this, there are a lot of legislators uh, that that want to help on this, you know, um, State Senator Dodd and and Assembly Member Wood and um, and Assembly Member Levine and McGuire. Uh, what's that? McGuire. McGuire. My gosh, yeah, I don't see. I shouldn't name names. I'll leave people out. <laughs> yeah. But I'll tell you that you know, elected officials are they hear that they're on this issue, but I think we're trying to find that balance, right? Because you really. Um, you know, the, the, the legislature, you know, the, the insurers will come in and say, we're just going to pick up stakes and we're going to leave, you know, and so that's kind of a big threat. So I think, I mean, we're trying to, and of course, on our end, we're saying, well, hey, you know, like these people have been giving, have been paying you premiums for, you know, 30 years, 40 years, you know, there's a relationship here. So, you know, we'd like to see, um, you know, we'd like to see the homeowner have a little, a, a little bit more rights you know, to hold on as some sort of a vesting thing, you know, they're in the system. Um, and that was our proposal. We couldn't quite get it. So I think, you know, this session has been, I think everyone's still reeling from COVID. I think, you know, going forward, um, we may see some more legislation, but to be honest, I would rather have the insurers come along voluntarily and start rewarding mitigation. And we're seeing little glimmers of that. 
Um, and so, you know, we want to get those standards in place. So at least there's an agreement on the science. If you do this, 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 your home is going to be less likely to burn. And isn't that good for everybody, right? That's what we all want. And I think the important part there is uh, the mitigation is good for all of us. It's good for the fire services. It's good for the homeowners. It's good for the insurers. It's good for the legislators. So the, the mitigation <laughs> is getting um, looked at. The standards are getting set. Um, you know, these things take careful consideration. But as Amy said, we are seeing companies who have gotten um, their asks through the Department of Insurance because they even have to have discounts approved. It's not something you can just decide to do all by yourself. Uh, so the department has been working to do that. The less structures and homes that burn, uh, you know, the less uh, we have to pay out for homes. Um, you know, we have to take in the right amount of money to be able to pay the losses. You know, those are the very simple basics. Uh, we don't actually make a huge margin of money on this anyway. Um, so um, I know that we don't often think that way, but, you know, as a person who's been in the industry for 30 years, I've crunched the numbers and seen how we can do this, uh, but mitigation is the key. Um, so I think that's why we all agree to talk on these panels, because at the end of the day, we don't want to see your home burn. You don't want to see your home burn. Um, so if we can help with mitigation by funding the IBHS research, um, they have a wonderful app similar to the uh, Ready for Wildfire app uh, that CAL FIRE has. Uh, but you can actually take your phone and go around your home and it'll help you uh, notice things that you didn't notice. Like I said, I live in a wildfire area and I'll think I've done everything and then go outside and find one more thing. So it's not an easy task, but it's certainly worthwhile. Yeah, Janet, thank you so much. And, and you mentioned, you said an acronym there that maybe people aren't familiar with. It's the Insurance Institute for Business and Home Safety that does uh, a lot of testing on uh, products, on, on structures to see how they can withstand various disasters. I want to thank uh, all of our guests tonight for joining. I think, Jennifer, did you have a, a take-home uh, slide you could put up for us? There's some take-home uh, for everyone. Uh, you know, review your homeowner's insurance uh, annually, uh, inventory your assets, determine the right amount and type of coverage you need, work with your insurance company to recognize wildfire mitigation work, shop for homeowner's insurance that meets your needs, and if you get a non-renewal notice, visit www.uphelp.org forward slash dropped. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, if I may, um, I just want to have the last word here uh, with the group as, the, as a fire chief, that's what you get sometimes. Um, you know, there's been a lot of media attention about wildfires being bigger and burning longer and more destructive and people feel overwhelmed by all of these reports. Um, but we're trying to bring forward some concrete actions that, that people can take to try and prevent and mitigate the unwanted effects of wildfire. So there are pathways of resilience and prevention. There are measures that you can use to avoid the losses. That is something that the, the uh, insurance business, to, excuse me, the Institute of Business and Home Safety is all about through demonstrating those full scale uh, uh, products on homes, a house out approach. You can do a lot as a homeowner. You can start where you stand from the roof going down making your home more fire resistant, and then working out into your vegetation. You can stop those brands and embers from igniting the house on fire. You can stop the vegetation from carrying the fire to the home. That goes a long way towards being a passive protection. When they looked at the, the houses that burned in the campfire, many, many of the homes that burned down were old, non-conforming, combustible construction. The ones that survived were ones that were built after uh, the requirement to have these fire ignition resistant building construction. So it's very, very possible. But at the end of the day, we're all trying to work forward on these pathways. And our destination is to see insurers, um, how they can see all of these, these 
pathways merge into lanes. We can create this framework for avoiding loss. This and more is being done across Marin, um, not just in individual structures, but in neighborhoods. So thank you all. There's a great group tonight that joined us. We'll get this presentation back out uh, to you. It'll be available. Go to firesafemarin.org uh, to watch for this. We'll get all the links and everything posted. I want to thank you all very, very much for taking your, uh, your evening here to, to join us. And uh, good luck to everyone out there. Thanks, Bill. Thank you.